Hello, my lovely friends. My name is Ava, and today we have a very exciting video. Today, we're going to be talking about my top 10 favorite monster and alien romances from 2022. I only own four of these physically, um, but I am so excited to talk about these books. And I am so glad I made the decision to make this video separate than my other top 10 reads of the year because I really want to dedicate a lot of time to talking about my favorite monster and alien romances and just hyping them up and gushing about them. And I feel like it would have been too long in my other 2022 favorite video. So that video will be up tomorrow if you're seeing this in real time, the day that it's posted. My top 10 romances of 2022 will be posted tomorrow. But those don't include my uh, alien and monster romances, which some of these books are my favorite books of the year. I just really wanted to separate it because I also know that some people don't like alien monster romances. So you can go watch the video that will be posted tomorrow if you're not into alien and monster romances. So yeah, these are some of my favorite books of the entire year. And I am so excited to gush to you about them. I don't have a ranking for these. I don't think I have like a favorite favorite. This year was very strange in that I don't have a singular favorite book of the year. I just don't. I didn't really, I didn't really think about it, I guess. <laughs> so um, these are just 10 books that I adored this year that have either a monster in it or an alien in it, or both. First one that I absolutely loved is A Soul to Keep by Opal Rain. This is the romance between Rhea and Orpheus. Rhea is a human woman that lives in this human settlement. So in this world that this book takes place in, um, you basically have three different kinds of beings. Um, you have humans who are kind of like dying out and live in these little communities to escape and be safe away from demons who live in this other area of land. And so demons are these shadow entities and they can get bigger and stronger the more humans they eat and consume. So humans really don't want these demons to get even bigger. So they really try to uh, stay away from them, obviously. And then you have dusk walkers, which you can see Orpheus on the cover is a dusk walker. He's kind of like a mix between a human and a demon, but also has some other animal qualities to them. And there's also other magical beings within this book as well, but those are the three main beings you'll see. So anyway, Rhea is the human sacrifice this year for her human settlement. Her human settlement does not like her. So they're like, okay, 10 years has come by. Every 10 years, they put out a human sacrifice to a dusk walker so he can use magic to protect them from demons every 10 years. Like it puts this portal over their settlement. And so like, okay, we need to give them somebody. Let's give them Rhea. We don't like Rhea. Let's, here you go. Here's Rhea. She's not very happy about this, but she has literally no other choice. <laughs> like they will literally kill her or literally throw her at his feet if she says no. Rhea is also terrified because uh, he kind of looks scary. You know, like Orpheus looks a little scary. Um, and she hasn't heard the greatest things about Duskwalkers, but she is in a total shock when she realizes that this like monster man is a total softy cinnamon roll who just wants a companion life. He wants someone to love and for someone to love him and for someone to give their soul to him and him to give his soul to them. Like he, just wants someone to love. He is so incredibly sweet and cute. Like this demon monster man is everything. That's all I want to say about this because I really don't want to spoil anything because this was such a joy to read. It's probably one of the longest books I've read this year. It's over 500 pages, I think, but it was so worth it. I don't normally read books this long, except for like stable favorite authors of mine. However, I loved how long this one was and I felt like it needed to be this long because you can totally see the progression from fear to friends to lovers to soulmates in this book. And it was beautiful. For all of these books, by the way, you can go check out my Goodreads page. My Goodreads is always linked down below if you want to know the tropes, because there's tropes listed in every single one of my reviews for all of these books. And also the trigger warnings, I list them out word for word in my reviews as well, if you want to know those. This year, I got into Lila Faye's books, <laughs> which she's becoming one of my new favorite monster romance authors. Like her books just make me cackle like crazy. I I have such a fun time reading her books because they are so ridiculous, but they are so good. Like they just put a huge smile on my face. Like she knows it too. Like she knows like these books are not to be taken like seriously. They're just like a grand fun old time that you can just escape into for a short amount of time. However, her Silver Fury series, the first one being The Orcs Bride, I feel like is her best work yet because 
these books are not her comical, like slapstick, funny books to make you cackle all day long. Like, these are serious monster romances that are hot and great and amazing. So if you've only read like Jack from her or like Satan, like her very short, like monster romance novellas, like check out this series because like this monster romance was phenomenal to me. It's one of my favorite orc romances ever. But this is the first book in the series. I read all three books this year and I would say number one is definitely my favorite. This is the romance between Una and Ergen. Una is a human woman who lives in a settlement that is overrun by orcs. She does not care for orcs. Orcs ended up killing her entire family and it is her dream in life to go to the emperor, the emperor of all the orcs, and to kill him. Like she wants that to be done because that's how much she hates orcs. But Una now is kind of like a human servant and she's required to serve orcs that come into her town. The orcs that have come are under Ergen's control. He is a warlord and um, he is facing a little bit of predicament. His boss is basically the emperor. Like the emperor uh, controls everything that he does and sends him out to do things. So the emperor really wants Ergen to marry his daughter. He hates his daughter. <laughs> like, she is horrible. She's a horrible, horrible being. He's like, okay, I cannot marry this orc woman. And I know if I go back home right now to the empire, like, I I will have to marry her. I don't want to. So you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to uh, marry somebody on my way there. So when I show up in front of the emperor, he can't set me up with his daughter because I'm already going to be hitched. <laughs> so he sees Una standing up to some of the orcs who she's serving. And he's like, ooh. That woman is very interesting. Let's see what I can do. And so Ergen ends up taking her on his journey to the Empire. She has her own secret motives of why she wants to go to the Empire, but he tells her on this trek, on this journey, I'm going to court you and convince you to be my bride. And she's like, okay, good luck with that. You can try, you can try, but uh, we'll see. So um, I adore this book. I loved Una and Ergen and their romance. And I really loved them in book two as well. And it just, all three books are about them, by the way. All three books in the series are about Una and Ergen. The tension and angst in here is top notch. And uh, I, 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 I just love this. I'm going to say that for all these books, but I did really love this work romance. Next, I have Captive of the Horde King by Zoe Draven. Um, this is the first book in the Horde Kings of Dakar series. This is the book that started it all. I have now read three books in this series and I have loved like every single one of them. I'm about to start book four. This is a series that is very fantasy-esque. Like you wouldn't think that this was an alien romance because it reads very fantasy. So if you are not into alien romances or uh, monster romances, start out with this book, okay? I feel like the more, the most alien stuff that you'll get in here physically wise is that they have like a golden hue to their skin and um, like tattoos on their bodies and they have tails. And that's the most like physically alien stuff that you'll get out of here. Like it's not like, looking at like I married a lizard man or something <laughs> you know like it's not like that so um if you're really wanting to dip your toe into alien romances I feel like this would be a great starter series for you the Dakar in here which are the alien people really remind me of the Dothraki from Game of Thrones so if you really like the Dothraki people this would be great for you as well they're like barbarian aliens and they are amazing I loved this one and then probably book three the most but I'm only going to be talking about book one for this video so um I can't wait to read more in the series though anyway this is the romance between Arokan and Luna so in this planet the Dakar people are the native ones they have lived on the planet for millennia like they were born the originators of this planet I think like there's over overpopulation on earth so human settlers have been going to different planets to make settlements there and so Luna has been on one of the settlements on this planet however human are not doing great on this planet because there is a strict set of rules if you live here be from the Dakar people like they are not allowed to burn their land they're not allowed to set fires they're not allowed to hunt animals the humans aren't doing great they are starving their settlements are dying out and Luna's brother comes up with the idea of burning all the crops that they've been growing in their settlement because the ashes and uh, the remnants of the burning will make the soil more fertile and hopefully the next round of plants being grown will be fruitful. However, the fire gets a little bit out of hand and the Dakar people see the fire and come running. They want justice. They want to punish whoever set fire to their beloved land. Luna ends up taking the blame for it. She tells them like, no, it's my fault. I did this. Take me. Do whatever you want with me. Don't harm my brother. You can take me. 
do it. Like, I just want my brother to live. Eric Han, who is the Horde King. There are multiple Horde Kings on this planet. And then there's like one big king. Eric Han is one of the Horde Kings. And the moment that he sees Luna, he knows that this woman is meant to be his queen. This is about Luna coming to his camp with his people, learning his ways. It was so good. It was so good. I love this series so much. It is so immersive and so unique. I love these books so much and I'm so excited I got into Zoe Draven this year. Another author I am so happy that I read this year is Victoria Aveline. Her book Choosing Theo came out all the way in 2020 and I just now read it and I am so happy that I did. I've read every single book in this series up until this point. Victoria Aveline like knows me now. She messages me and she has sent me like the arc of the most recent one. Like I am beyond blessed because I love this series. This is the Placanian series by Victoria Aveline, which is a alien romance series all about human women who were illegally abducted from Earth and their their planes end up, or spaceships, sorry, not planes, their spaceships end up crashing on this planet in various different areas. And so it's by a human woman falling for one of the Clacanians that live on the planet. I definitely have my favorites. Definitely Choosing Theo is number one on my list. In the next slot, I have uh, Using Feho. Um, which is a marriage of convenience uh, space pirate. Grumpy Sunshine with a hero is the sunshine and the heroine is the grump. So I really like that one. But we're going to talk about uh, Choosing Theo because it is book number one and it is my favorite in the series. This is the romance between Jade and Theo. Theo is obviously one of the aliens that I mentioned and Jade is one of the humans that crashed. There's a rule throughout Clocania that any woman of age has to be married. And so Jade is like kind of like thrown into that custom as well. And she gets to choose her husband and she ends up choosing... Theo. People are shocked because by Clocania standards, uh, Theo is not the most appealing to look at because he has scars all over his body from a burning. Jade is like, what are you talking about? This dude is stunning. What, where, what are you women thinking? <laughs> anyway, so uh, Theo thinks that Jade chose him to be um, her husband as like, a joke like or she's a spy or something like he's like this cannot be real because he's been told by so many people like you're not attractive you're not worthy of a wife he has been keeping his distance from jade even though they're in a marriage of convenience because she has to be married you know he's been keeping his distance from her because he knows that if he falls for her he's just gonna get hurt because he thinks she's not in this for real when she actually is and um Man, does he eat crow when he realizes that Jade is actually falling for him and that this isn't a made up thing. I adore this one. Jade is fantastic. She's a plus size kick butt, great banter woman. Like I love Jade so much and her grumpy sunshine relationship with Theo was just everything. I of course have to mention a Ruby Dixon book, okay? <laughs> we have The Half Orcs Made and Bride by obviously Ruby Dixon. This is her first orc romance and I really hope she writes more because this was just epic to me. If you're really wanting to get into Ruby's books, I feel like this is a great starter book and also if you like fantasy romances, this is a fantasy romance novella and it's a standalone. It takes place in the same world as their other fantasy romance series, but they don't interconnect like any in any way. They just take place in the same world. So anyway, this is the romance between Yolanthe and Agacor. So at the start of this book, you read about Lady Yolanthe and how she's kind of disappointed in her life. She's a plus size woman. She is very tall and she is very different than her many sisters. Her sisters are very small and dainty and already have husbands, have been wooed and courted by men. And Yolanthe has never experienced any of that. But all she wants in the entire world is she wants a husband. She wants someone to love her. And she's just been waiting. She's been waiting, but she has kind of like accepted the fact that she's just gonna be a spinster for the rest of her life and live with her dad at home. Um, but then one day her dad comes home and is like, Yolanthe, I have found a husband for you. And she is thrilled. And so she goes on a truck with him to meet her husband. And she is shocked when she realizes that her dad basically sold her to an orc to be his wife. And the orc, Agacor, had no idea that Yolanthe was not, like, did not know about this. And so he like pulls her aside when they first meet. He's like, are you sure about this? Because like, you can say no, it's totally fine. And she realizes like, I'm kind of into this orc, what is going on? <laughs> and uh, no, she's like, okay, no, I'll, I'll agree to marry you, it's fine. And they have to go through a bunch of marriage rituals and marriage customs and have to get to know each other. And it is so cute and hot. Oh my gosh, the marriage customs in this fantasy romance series are some of my favorite things to read about ever. Cause you have three rituals that uh, the hero has to go through to prove that he can be a good husband. and. They are so hot. 
They were so good. This was just so swoony and so good. And I love Jolanthe. I love how Ruby just made this heroine. Like I love reading about heroines that aren't your cookie cutter romance heroines that you read about. And so I, I adore this. For another alien romance, I have So Hot's Protection by A.G. Wilde. I really got into A.G. Wilde's books this year too. And I'm so grateful because I really want to go back and read just all of her backlist. My favorite book that I read by her this year is definitely So Hut's Protection. This is the romance between Cleo and So Hut. You met So Hut in the previous book in the series. You don't need to read these books in order, by the way. He just pops up. He's the brother to the guy from book one. So it's kind of like a miss missionary, missionary. What's it called? Mercenary. Oh my gosh. I said missionary. <laughs> Met mercenary. Oh my gosh. Anyway, he's a mercenary and he kind of gets hired to track down animals and he's been hired to track down this one particular animal in this jungle. However, the people that hire him don't tell him that uh, the being that he's hunting isn't actually an animal. It's a human woman. So Cleo was captured from Earth years ago and she ends up on this one planet in like a cage and she ends up bumping the cage over and escaping. It has been living in this jungle, surviving on her own for a year. And so the aliens hire Sohut after a year of not being able to find her to go track her down. And so Sohut is shocked when he finally comes into contact with the being he's hunting and is like, this is a woman. Like this is not an animal. They end up after a little bit of chasing, <laughs> uh, teaming up together to try and escape these evil aliens. Um, and protect Cleo from them. I did not expect to love this one as much as I did, but it was so amazing. I love survival alien romances. I've read a few this year and they just like get me. They are everything to me. I just love also survival romances in general, like two people having to work together to live like I am a sucker for it. I loved this one and I feel like more people need to read it and just A.G. Wild in general because I feel like no one else has talked about her. I of course have to mention a Tiffany Roberts book. I did read Ensnared this year and I really enjoyed that one but I really want to mention His Darkest Craving. Sorry for the, the glare. It's a very shiny cover but this is their new cover for the book and I am obsessed with it. So here you have Cruz. And then there's Sophie. However, this is Cruz's like physical form. Cruz 99% of the time looks like this shadow demon up here. Okay, so this is a shadow demon monster romance. Sophie on the cover, she is a human woman who is trying to escape her abusive ex-husband. And so she decides to rent a cabin on the edge of these woods. While she's there, she does feel like, like someone's watching her and it kind of freaks her out. She does not know that um, it's actually Cruz. He is the demon that protects the woods that's on the edge of the house. And he has killed every single human he's come across. He's like, humans just end up horribly ruining forests and land. And so I'm just gonna kill him. And so the night that she is first there, he ends up going into her room. He's this fog entity demon. He's cursed to be like this, by the way. I forgot to mention that. He's cursed to be the shadow entity, except for I think on Halloween night every year, he can change into his physical form. Um, anyway, so he's in a shadow entity form and he ends up going into a room and it's like over her, over the bed. And he's like about to kill her. And he's like, he, he can't, he can't do it. And he is shocked. He's like, why can't I kill this human? What is so special about her? Like, I, I can't do it. He ends up kind of like stalking her, watching her and just loving her from afar. And then um, he finally reveals himself. And Sophie is shocked to realize that things like Cruz exist in the world. This was so romantic. You wouldn't think that a romance between a human and a shadow entity demon being would be romantic, but it totally is. Um, I just fell for Sophie and Cruz. And I just loved how these two people who have like very troubled pasts like came together and just fell in love with each other. I read a lot of Grace Goodwin this year. I kind of, I wanted to make like a whole Grace Goodwin video. I wanted to read all of her books and do a whole video about the Interstellar Bride program series, but I honestly don't think that will happen. I don't, I never say never, but um, her books I feel like are very reused to me. So my favorite books by her this year were the ones that were different, that were unique, that weren't, a reused plot. So one that I absolutely love that you can read on its own as a standalone is Tamed by the Beast. So this series is called the Interstellar Bride Program series. So human women from Earth can sign up to be an interstellar bride and they get matched to their like best compatible person. Some of these books are also faded mates. Not all alien species in this series have faded mates. This one does. So I, I really loved that in this. This is the romance between Tiffany and Deke. So Deke is a part of the aliens that, ugh, I forgot what they're called, um, but they're basically like aliens that 
have like a hulk form like a beast form so uh they can like really grow into like they look like the hulk but they're not green like they just grow um when they're very angry or their emotions are heightened and then there comes to a point in their lives when they have kind of like mating fever if they're not able to find their mate by a certain time in their life like their body has like a, a timer going off like a ticker and if you're you're not able to find your mate by a specific time in your life like you will go into beast mode forever and be a danger to society and you have to be put down because the beast mode aliens will basically hurt everyone and everything in sight and it's not okay that's what these aliens have deemed and so tiffany has been paired with deke things go a little awry when she realizes that deke is in this beast mode timer mode and he's about to be executed and so she has to go to his alien planet to save him from being killed this one was so hot <laughs> so hot so good and i love a good faded mate and this one was just a great little alien novella to escape into in 2022 i really enjoyed this one the other ruby dicks that i have to mention is when she's lonely which is one of her risdiverse novellas i just can't stop thinking about this book i think about it constantly it just pops to my brain all the freaking time this is the romance between ashley and kex they live on the planet rizda 3 which is a refugee planet for human slaves who have been illegally abducted from earth they have this planet called rizda 3 where they can live fulfilling lives on their own after being taken so kex works as kind of like a policeman kind of in this world who is there to specifically watch over and protect humans. Ashley is a human woman who people don't really care for because they think she's very rude and ignores a lot of people when in actuality, she is hard of hearing. When she was abducted, she was not taken with her hearing aids. And so she's completely deaf in one ear and then partially deaf in the other. And she has not had these hearing aids. When she was first abducted, the alien slavers basically told her like, if you are imperfect, if you're not the perfect slave, you will be cut off like done for <laughs> like unalived and so she's had to pretend that she can hear all these years because she is so scared of someone coming to kill her kex ends up realizing what is going on with ashley that she's actually hard of hearing she is not rude she's not mean she's not ignoring people and he realizes this is the perfect opportunity to get to know ashley more he kind of blackmails her in a way he's like hey okay i won't tell anyone your secret about you um not being able to hear if uh, you go on some dates with me and they become friends and then it turns into something more ashley by the way uh at the beginning of this book even though she's on rista 3 which is a very safe planet she still has these fears that aliens will come for her one day and so she still does not want to know anyone to know that she's hard of hearing but kex wouldn't actually tell people that she's hard of hearing like he just wants to get to know her and he finds this as the perfect excuse like blackmailing her <laughs> this was so stinking sweet i love this couple so much and their romance was so sweet i really just want to reread it like right now I, I i need to and the last book that i want to mention for this video is muscles and monsters by ashley bennett i also read the second book in the series which is tentacles and triathlons i adore that book so much but today i'm only gonna be talking about book one in the series this is the romance between tegan and atlas so this book takes place in a world much like ours there's humans but there's also monsters that live amongst humans tegan is a human woman who owns a bakery and she is loading one of her cakes into her truck and she ends up dropping one of the tears of the cake right in front of atlas who is this wolf monster creature who owns the gym leviathan fitness a few doors down from her bakery and he ends up helping her with the cake and everything and from that moment on the two of them cannot stop thinking about each other and so tegan really wants to be in close vicinity with atlas again so she decides to get a membership at his gym and she really would love some one-on-one -on -one training sessions with this wolf man this one was so sweet and hot like if you want a cute but hot romance you need to pick this one up. I adored Ashley Bennett's writing. I loved the world in here and Alice and Tegan were epic to me. They're so sweet and so cute and so epic. Like I adored this. Anyways, there you have it. Those were my top 10 favorite monster slash alien romance books that I read in 2022. Please let me know down below if you've read any of these books or if you plan to and what your favorite monster or alien romance books that you read in 2022. I really want to know. I love knowing that. Please gush about your favorites in the comments and be sure to check out tomorrow's video, which will be my top 10 other favorite romances of 2022. Anyways, thank y'all so, so much for watching. I will see y'all soon in my next one. Bye, y'all.